Hi and welcome to this video for the BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 and what we're going to be looking at here is Electrophilic Addition. So I've cut these two pieces out together more or less because they flow into each other in terms of looking at the mechanism and then discussing the intermediate stage. So what we'll do is we'll start with an example where we'll pick out first off a symmetric alkene. These ones are much easier to look at. So if we just start with ethene and we bring in on the hydrogen halide, so we'll say HBr. Now, for what's actually going to occur here, first off, this region is electron dense. So I'm going to use black arrows just for when I'm highlighting something and red arrows are the ones that you're going to be interested in for the actual movement of the electrons. So the double bond in there is electron dense. So what it's going to be attracted to is obviously electron deficient regions. Now, if we look at hydrogen and bromine, we've got a difference in electronegativity. So the hydrogen is electron deficient and the bromine is electron rich as the bromine's got the stronger electronegativity. So in terms of mechanistically what's going to occur, if I just change my colour over, what we do is we start at the double bond. We always start where the electrons are, and we are going to use a double-headed arrow to represent the movement of two electrons. So we start at the double bond, and we'll point towards the hydrogen. Strictly a point towards where the bond is going to be formed, but at this level, just point to the atom. Um, it'd be perfectly fine on the mark schemes. So double bond to the hydrogen. This means the double bond there is going to break. One of the carbons is going to form a covalent bond with the two electrons to the hydrogen. Now hydrogen can only have one bond. So if a bond forms between the hydrogen and the carbon, then the bond between the hydrogen and the bromine must break. So the bromine takes both electrons. So this is what's known as heterolytic bond fission, that's stated up here, i.e. both of the electrons are going one way. So hetero, different, um, heterosexual, obviously attracted to the opposite sex. So that's our initial stage there where the reactants come together. We'll have a look at the intermediate stage. Now it does not matter which carbon I put the hydrogen on here because they're both perfectly symmetrical. So I'm just going to put it on the left and what I'm just going to do is highlight it so that See, that's the hydrogen that came in there. So obviously the other carbon would have lost its electron that it had in the bond there initially being shared. So because it's lost an electron, it would now have a positive charge. So this is what's called a carbocation intermediate. Basically carbon cation, positive charge, and then the intermediate is referring to the stage. So what happens next is our bromide that's floating about because the bromine took the hydrogen's electron in this covalent bond will now come in and join to the carbon. So we are going to get a bond forming between the bromine and the carbon there. And to finish it off then, the product would look like this. So this is electrophilic addition. So just to put in some definitions as well, an electrophile. is an electron pair acceptor. 
So the HBR here is our electrophile. So in terms of this, we've looked at the symmetric there. We are able to do the mechanism stages. So your marks would be awarded for these curly arrows that I've got in red. And you'd also get a mark for drawing the correct carbocation intermediate. Being able to assign dipoles, we've done that there, the delta positive and the delta negative. And using the double headed curly arrows, again, as I've just done there. So what we'll do now is obviously we'll start mixing up, bringing in where we've got asymmetric alkenes and varying what we're playing around with in terms of the electrophile. Um, one thing oh yeah, just to point out, obviously it is being able to write equations here. Being able to do this in equation, you would just have CH2, CH2 plus HBr. We've got the double bond in there. The double bond breaks whenever you're doing anything with addition. So it would just become CH3, CH2Br. So equation-wise, it's a lot easier. As you can see, we are taking our two reactants and just sticking them together to get one product. So now to look at the asymmetric. So oh, I'll keep it to a fairly small alkene here. We'll use prop one in. And I'll vary it up. Uh, we'll say we'll use sulfuric acid for this. Now, in terms of whether you're using water, the hydrogen halide, or the sulfuric acid, don't get freaked out by any of them. Essentially, they all boil down to when we've got our molecules, you'll see it's just H joined to X, basically, or whatever's here. The mechanism occurs exactly the same for all three of these. So, our initial bit I change pen color here. We start at the double bond again. We point to the hydrogen. If I just put the dipoles back on, just so we can see why, the hydrogen is delta positive because the oxygen is more electronegative, so it is delta negative. So if the bond is forming between one of the carbons and the hydrogen, the bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen. Break. Go on to the middle stage. Right, so we've now got a choice here. With our intermediate stage, the hydrogen can go on either of the carbons, and obviously the other carbon will get the positive charge. But there is a preference for this. So where it's saying being able to draw the structures of the carbocation here and understand the stability in terms of the electron donated effect of alkyl branches, this is what we are going to be looking at because it explains why one product is favored over another. Now what I'm going to look at is the major product. I'm going to make this one. Now, for the major product, I want the most stable carbocation. Now, the most stable carbocation is when the carbon with the positive charge is attached directly to as many carbons as possible. So this carbon on the right-hand side here, if I put the positive charge on that, it is joined to two carbons. So this is a secondary carbocation.
and therefore we'll put the hydrogen coming in onto the other carbon. Now we don't really need to go into why for this. Uh, basically the more carbons you've got around they can share their electron density a little bit and it helps cancel out this positive charge. So it's a, what's called a positive inductive effect in terms of they are pushing electron density onto this carbon to help um, balance that out. So this carbon with a positive charge is more stable than if it was this carbon here with a positive charge because there would only be one carbon or the alkyl group pushing in here. So just to finish off our mechanism, should look very similar to before. And that what we've got now is the lone pair of electrons on a species. It will come in and bond to that carbon. And thus our final product. Will look like this. So this is our major product. Now just to clarify that exactly if you are asked why it's the major, if I flip these rounds, so I had the option there for which carbon to put the positive on and which carbon to put the hydrogen on. If I did it the other way This is what's called the primary carbocation. So the primary, secondary, tertiary just comes from how many carbons it is directly attached to. Please listen to the emphasis there, directly. So it wouldn't matter if there was 10 other carbons coming off this one up here. There are only two connected directly to it. And likewise here, there is only one connected directly to it. If I want to explain why the product I went for is the major, then what I would say is the secondary carbocation intermediate is more stable And the alternative, so the other option, the alternative primary carbocation. So that's why this product up here is formed preferentially. Right, so we've now looked at symmetric and asymmetric. We've been able to draw the mechanism stages. We can assign dipoles based on electronegativity difference, and we are using the curly headed arrows. The carbocation is always formed in this intermediate stage, and it will either be a primary, secondary, or, cor or tertiary carbocation intermediate. It's only of interest to us when we're looking at asymmetric alkenes, because if it's symmetric, then obviously the choice is uh, null and void since it's the same either side. So the carbocation formed. Predict and draw the structure of carbocations. We've done that here. The stability. So tertiary is more stable than secondary, which is more stable than primary. So if you want a major product, you go for the higher number. If you want the minor product, you go for the lower number. Now, there's one other little bit I just want to discuss, and that's bringing in where we've just got halogen. So I'm just going to go back to 
ethene here because it doesn't matter if it's symmetric or asymmetric because the other chemical we are using, it wouldn't matter which way we put the bromine on this carbon. Now, what this is to do with is asking, how can this possibly react with our alkene when bromine joined to bromine or chlorine joined to chlorine, whatever we're looking at here with halogens, they'll use bromine because it's the common chemical test for this. How is it able to react when the electronegativity difference between these is zero since they are the same atom? So the reason for this is, remember I said this region was electron dense. Now, depending on how our bromine molecule approaches this double bond, one of them can approach closer than the other. So this double bond repels the electrons in this bond here towards the bromine furthest away from it. So what that does is it creates a temporary dipole within our molecule. And it's at that moment then the mechanism occurs exactly the same as any other because the double bond will now break and the carbon will form a covalent bond with the nearest bromine. And the electrons in this covalent bond are therefore taken by the other. Our intermediate stage. So the bromide will now come in and attach to the other carbon. Can I move my positive across a little bit? Nope, and rub that out. And therefore, what we get both bromine stuck on, and we get the one to dibromoethane. Now, like I said, the reason this is used is because bromine is orange, whereas once it's reacted with the double bond and the alkenes become an alkane, it is now colorless. So it's a common chemical test for a double bond there in the alkene. And again, just to go through it, I believe that's everything ticked off now. Yeah, okay, thank you.